this is an interview with Professor John Latham, Vice Chancellor of the Coventry University and Deputy Vice Chancellor for Business Development at the Coventry University, England. Thank you for, uh, for the honor of joining us at the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy here in Berlin and for your lecture and discussion with us today. <clears throat> A very warm welcome from the side of ICD Berlin also. We would like to ask you four questions in order to hear your thoughts and opinions on some salient issues. I'm going with my, my first question. Over the past 15 years, the ICD has worked to extend cu current research programs and practices in the field of cultural diplomacy, founding the Academy for Cultural Diplomacy and becoming the first institution to have higher education programs in the field of cultural diplomacy. As the chancellor of such a noble university as Coventry is, how significant do you think it is to have to have cultural diplomacy as a recognized academic subject? I think it's very, very important that both at Coventry we have a, a Centre for um, Trust, Peace and, and Social Relationships which operates in a very similar space uh, and to the Institute and I think fundamentally if you have both undergraduate postgraduate programmes of study, one it gives you one uh, academic credibility, it also then allows you to underpin the research activity okay. which has been taking place in, in this area and actually means that you then have a, a true academic focus to take forward the subject matter. I was keenly, uh, I was keenly attended your conference, and you were talking about the UN Day because Co uh, Coventry University mm -hmm. has already celebrated UN UN Day. So, can you like uh, briefly discuss about what UN Day is? Yeah, sure. In terms of what we're trying to do at Coventry, as much as possible, is to recognise organisations that represent peace, reconciliation, development of uh, intercultural activities, and uh, certainly the UN is recognised as one of those main bodies. Okay. So where possible, we as a university will celebrate um, global days, national days, local days, which okay, actually support okay. peace. Okay. The ICD Organization for Youth, Education and Development has managed to bring thousands of young people together from every corner of the world to discuss and promote issues that are vital to the younger generation. In your opinion, which role model universities play in young people's future? Moreover, how can unemployment be linked to the quality of European universities? How difficult could be the European universities to exploit intellectual property into the global market? Okay. Yeah. I think there are many things. One of the key roles that you have as a university is to ensure that young people are given as much of exposure to global issues as possible, to then engage in global issues and actually where they can experience global issues. So the opportunity to actually have students come to another country to study, to have spend some time, to have an internship, to welcome students from other countries into our own university, actually starts to develop employment yeah. skills and employability, which will put them in a, a place where they'll be able to go forward in the future and become global citizens and global employees. Uh, what kind of student ratio are you sharing in your university? Because like. Uh, are, you, uh, are you having students from UK or European Union or outside? Of okay, well, we have Europe. about 143 countries oh, that's nice to are hear. represented at yeah, yeah. uh, the university, and around 3,000 of our students a year have an international experience, oh, it which is, is a, quite a considerable. We're about 27,000 yeah. students, so over a tenth of our students. Our students are getting a good amount of global exposure, and that's what you exposure. mean to say. Yeah. Thank you. I'm moving to my next question. Mm -hmm. In a world of much greater uncertainty and complexity, <clears throat> like one of we are living in with frequent occupational change, global mobility and cultural diversity, in your opinion, have universities become institutions? If it is so, are they getting more autonomies in order to promote innovation and entrepreneurship? I think the, the main issue really is around the world of autonomy and being autonomous. Um, and I think as we move forward now, a lot of universities in many countries, and this is true also in in Coventry, uh, we have more autonomy than we've ever had before, which means we're more independent. Okay. But we are more autonomous maybe in the fact that what we tend to do is to have more and more students from global organisations. We have more partnerships which are global and our ability to actually interact with them is much freer than it used to be when we were publicly funded. Why do you think so like, uh, p uh, like universities and higher education institutions have autonomy and uh, they are not like properly governed by the government? Why, why do I, you I think, think there is a change. There's a change globally in terms of more and more uh, universities, particularly within, within Western Europe and, and, and North America, are becoming more independent of government because they're receiving less funding from government. Yeah. More and more of their funding comes from, from different sources. Um, that enables them to still be influenced by government, and I think most universities will continue to be influenced by government. But it does give them the uh, autonomy to be able to then engage in more international, global activities that perhaps 
um, they wouldn't necessarily do if they were under a, a direct central control. So, do you think that that uh, <coughs> giving autonomy to higher education institutions, uh, uh, so they, they provide the better results in future if they have the autonomy? I think there are levels of autonomy which, which actually increase the ability of universities to be more and more impressive global players. And if a university itself wants to um, work in a global stage, then obviously it needs to have the freedom to do so. And sometimes if you don't have the correct level of autonomy, you'll find that there are barriers to you actually engaging globally. Okay. Uh, just, I'm just moving to my fourth question. That's okay. Over the last two decades, we have already seen many developments in what uh, can now be called the sustainable revolution where governments, corporations, and civil society have been working relentlessly to achieve a sustainable future for the global community. In your opinion, will the new economies and sustainability help international organizations raising the awareness for human rights and issues like poverty, global warming, and hunger? I think we're on a very, very long journey. Um, I think that you'll see in certain parts of the world there are pockets, there are islands of significant step-forward change that's happened. We're seeing in our own uh, particular city at Coventry the bringing together of the city council, the universities, the employers to work together on a scale that's never been seen before. And I think you're seeing this in other parts of the world. It is a huge global issue, though. It is a very long journey, probably not going to be solved even within my lifetime or even your lifetime. Okay. Um, but I think yeah. ultimately we're in the right direction. Um, there'll be a few bumps in the road. The mm -hmm. wheels will occasionally drop off. But I think as a race, we'll pick them up and continue to move forward. And really, the, uh, the main opportunity for change is always within the young. Okay, <laughs> definitely. I, I would like to ask some questions about the international organizations mm -hmm. working like United Nations for Educational, Social, Cultural Organization, like we call UNESCO. Mm -hmm. Commonwealth has its own uh, Commonwealth uh, Department of Education. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what can these organizations will do to enhance the higher education prospects in terms of prosperity, in terms of peace building and all? I think, well, they're all there to do the right thing, and they're all there to move us all in the right direction. The main strength will come when we've got true connectedness of these organizations. So everybody feels part of the same network, all moving in the same direction, all trying to achieve the same types of goals. Um, and I think that's improved as well over the last few years, certainly the last 10 years. So I think they are uh, an important part, an important cog within the wheel, which will enable both the universities, partners, uh, and whether they be global or international, work together to actually make the step changes that you're talking about. How, uh, like, how important it is to study public policy, global governance, and cultural diplomacy? I think if you are looking to be a student within that space, it's very important. I think if you're looking to be someone who's influential in the development of strategy, whether it be local, regional, national, or international, yeah. it's very important to have both access to experts within that field, but also to be certainly aware of the importance that that subject areas and those subject areas are now bringing to a future global economy. Would you like to give some message to like our uh, our audience and uh, like uh, other students to ICD? Uh, do you have any message for us? Yeah, I think the main message is like most things that if you're part of an organisation, yeah. uh, and certainly an organisation which is as well connected as this organisation is, then you really need to get out more. Go and see the partners, go and work with others, work yeah, in global yeah. networks okay. constantly, yeah. continuously, okay. and create those networks for yourself. Thanks a lot for joining us in ICD. Okay, Thanks a lot. no problem. Yeah. Thank you.